oh, we were able to make our like pop stars so sexy, but like we kind of have trouble like making Hyundai sexy. Of course, the battery is important, panoramic roof, but the most important is that I can turn it into a KTV. Can these Asian car brands actually compete with Tesla for the future of the EV market? Well, the internet seems to think so, and maybe I do too. Andrew, Tesla is always in the news. Elon's always in the news, but this time it's because the future of its EV market dominance may be called into question due to, uh, you know, German manufacturers, but mostly because of Asian car manufacturers. We're talking about South Korea, Japan, China, Vietnam is in there coming for the throne. Wow. All right, so let's get into it. We're going to cover the main competitors. Guys, we are not car experts okay we understand that however we are asian guys and asian guys love cars and asian cars have dominated the market at least on a certain level for the past 20 30 years you know so guys let's talk about it david who's the number one competitor in the game that's going heads up with the model three on the affordable evs all right now they're a competitor we are talking about south korea with hyundai and kia we're talking about iconic or, or ionic five six seven future models that are yet to come out andrew they are swinging for the fences these cars look super futuristic they're taking a lot of risks on the design they kind of look like mini porsches mini like audis but even more futuristic andrew they're coming for it yeah i mean they're jam-packed with features obviously uh, all in all a lot of people would say that they are a better value now better value does not always equal sexier or what people want of course as we know with kind of like android phones like the samsung series like those are great phones and they have a lot of features that even yeah. iphone I, th don't I think it's clear that a Fold 4 from Samsung has more features, Andrew, than an iPhone. Right, but a lot of people still want to go for the iPhone because, you know, for a number of reasons. But uh, anyways, like, do you ever think Koreans are like, oh, we were able to make our, like, pop stars so sexy, but, like, we kind of have trouble, like, making Hyundai sexy. So if we can just make the BTS of cars, we'll be good. For sure. I mean, they're right there. It's the most competitive out of all the Asia brands. Uh, you'd think it would be Japan, but we're going to get to that later. But, Andrew, there was a little bit of a blow recently because Biden is going to tax all foreign imports next year soon and give the discount only on American EVs. Tesla is an American company. And South Korea, Andrew, they felt betrayed. Yeah, I mean, President Biden, like we sent you BTS, so why can't you give us a break on the TAX for the KIA? Number two, Andrew, we're gonna move on to Japan. This has been the most dominant like car producer for the past 30 years globally. And Andrew, guess what? They do not embrace the electric vehicle. They only have like two EVs out of like 100 models that they make you know what's really interesting japan is always one of those cases where they still all their products are still really high quality and they led the future for many decades but now that same attitude of just betting on themselves might be holding them back why are they only in the hydrogen game and not the ev game well they do a little bit uh, of a lot of like ev battery hybrids with combustion engines and a lot of hydrogen but it's because andrew they themselves don't have the electrical grid to support EV charging and sort of like the structure of their cities. There's no space for EV stations. And under their island country, they have a lot of hydrogen. So that's why they're betting on hydrogen. Here's the thing. The rest of the world is not betting on hydrogen. I will bet on Japan <clears throat> and hydrogen vehicles. Whether this bet works out or not, I know that I did it my way. Do you think they're making a huge mistake or do you understand the... I guess the situations and the constraints and sort of the mindset behind going with hydrogen. I mean, if you read a lot of articles, guys, and I'm not an expert, I'm not a scientist, but I heard hydrogen, if you can do it, is better than electric, actually, uh, for a number of reasons. So uh, I guess they're hoping maybe that the whole EV thing like maybe blows over and then <laughs> they'll be ready with the hydrogen uh, vehicles at the end of the day. Or, you know, maybe that's the only thing that they can do. I don't know. I'm not really sure. Godzilla emerged from the waters and the methane extract to make hydrogen also will come from the depths of the ocean we will die on our sword like a samurai regardless of the future 
Yeah, it's kind of like Japan was leading like J-pop and a lot of pop culture for a while and they were so innovative and then they've kind of been stagnant maybe the past like you know, 10 years. You know what's really interesting, Andrew? Japan will often develop the very best version of an older school technology like physical currency, but it works so well, they don't really feel the need to like hop into digital currencies or even like credit cards as much. Andrew, moving on to number three, Andrew, we're talking about the biggest EV market in the world, the biggest car market in the world, period. We are talking about China. David, China has NEO, okay? That is like one of the best EV companies. And then also they have BYD, they have Li Auto, they even have Xpeng, man. All right, so I would say this. So China is a huge car market. Uh, a lot of EVs, but I guess there's always questions about Chinese products, even though everybody knows that they're affordable and they're a good value, right? You're going to wonder about the quality of the vehicle. You're also going to wonder, uh, did they just steal designs? I don't know if you really care about that. And then number three, as far as coming to America, given the geopolitical technology cold war that we're in, obviously like, I could see a U.S. not letting a lot of Chinese vehicles in for a number of security reasons, right? Yeah, possibly safety crash test history chronicles and things like that i mean uh long story short i would not bet andrew on the uh Gung he six coming to the u.s shores anytime soon however there are a lot of other markets globally that china can export a ton of evs to right the yeah, affordable I, evs i mean these are the biggest car markets in the world by uh size china u.s japan india germany brazil south korea russia and it goes on and on i mean think about it there is a lot of places that need cars so i guess at the end of the day if your car brand isn't dominating america america is not the only market sure america would be considered the top market but uh there's so many other countries out there that need cars you know one thing that i was uh thought was interesting when i was researching chinese evs andrew is they really focus on in car entertainment like a lot of people got karaoke systems even tesla had to put a karaoke system with tesla microphones in it to like be competitive with everybody else you know when i am shopping for a ev of course the battery is important panoramic roof but the most important is that i can turn it into a ktv number four guys i'm losing my voice i know i know andrew we're talking about a country that people might not expect to see on this list vietnam coming through with vinfast david you are so passionate about this thank you for sacrificing your voice for this guys vinfast will get your vietnamese friend excited because they're actually producing some pretty cool evs out there guys uh if you look at it they even have stores in america where you can check out the cars um yeah they man, are we designed it in italy but we made it in haiphong man yeah and they're trying to move their manufacturing to north carolina soon so they got big plans because they the big man because they're like been fast man you know like you got to you don't have to pay in cash, but you know, you get to VIN fast. Man, I thought VIN fast was V-I-N-H-P-H-A-S-T, man. Hey, man, are you telling me at the showroom they're going to get some of the San Jose ABG? Sell me a VIN fast H8, H9. Guys, the next country that is a huge car market and now a huge EV market is India. And India has some of its own car brands, actually a number of them. But the number one that we're going to be talking about is Tata. That's probably the biggest one. Uh, they're also known for making very affordable cars, but they got some new EVs that are looking pretty slick. The new Tata curve, man. It looks like as good as anything out there, man. You know, I mean, we, we got it all. We got everything from Tata Nano down for the like cheaper consumer all the way to Curve. I'm telling you, man, if we can get Rishi Sunak in a Tata Curve, man, it would set, it would break the internet. Yes, uh, but I, I, jokes aside, I actually think the South Asian market is so gigantic that uh, India probably doesn't need to have their cars in the American market, to be honest, because they there's so many countries around there that need cars. So, yeah. Andrew. Let's just get into it, Andrew. Do any of these brands or collectively have the chance to challenge Tesla's global market dominance? I'll tell you this. There's a chance, but it'll probably always be a little bit like an iPhone, Android type situation. The Android's always got crazier designs. You know, the Tesla designs, they look very classical. They're nice, but they're like not too crazy. You know, they're just designed to give you a lot of good panoramic roof room and stuff like that. The interiors aren't too crazy on a Tesla. It's very minimalistic, sort of like the iPhone's minimalistic, but people kind of, they kind of trust it, right? And they kind of rock with it. I mean, to be honest, yeah, if it's a good American brand, I feel like Americans are going to lean towards that, especially given that like, 
you know, they'd rather do that than like support f other foreign brands. I mean, it's low key, that's always a feeling that people have. Um, but I think that these other EV companies can produce better values than Tesla. I really think so. And I think that as far as the Model 3 goes, which MSRP is at about $45,000, $46,000. I mean, if you bring in an Ionic 6 at $40,000, I think it's going to compete with the Model 3. I don't know if it's like the X is going to, has any competitors or anything, but definitely on the affordable end, I think it's possible. Yeah, I agree with you. I think the majority of the competition where like Tesla's going to feel that crunch is going to be on the lower end, probably sub $75,000 car. Yeah, but but for example, for Hyundai, which is the main competitor, it is going to be hard to shake that Hyundai branding where like people still see it as like just a cheap car. Like, oh, I don't want to pay $70,000 for a Hyundai. Are you kidding me? You know, that's why they have Genesis. So I guess I'm surprised they didn't make a Genesis the new, like, make the top EV in the Genesis They line. do have EV Genesis's, though. But interestingly enough, the EV Genesis don't look like EV cars. They just look like regular ones. Um, Japan, you know, being very, very conservative, you know, they dominated the market. I guess they're, they're slow to change, you know? But you don't want to see, like, a Kodak-type situation where they're too slow to change. Obviously, China, like we said, probably going to dominate on the lower end, you know? Um, countries where they don't, like, have such a contentious relationship, probably more likely to take Chinese cars. Hey man, who knows? Japan just does the hydrogen cars so well. Everybody just wants the hydrogen cars. I don't know if there's any country that could do it. It would be Japan. Andrew, um, I'm rooting for all the Asian car manufacturers, even though we're like Tesla stockholders. I will say this. Nobody gives you anything in this game though. You got to come through with some great designs, some great customer service, and some great values consistently to break this market. Hey, when it comes to the value game, you can never count Asians out, man. You know, I'm, I can't say for sure they're gonna beat out Tesla and all the other brands, but they, on the affordable value level, yes, yes. And very he, much competitive. And here's the thing, Andrew, the market, consumer market is more fragmented than ever. Different people looking for different things. You know, some people care that Tesla got creaky doors. Some people don't care. All right, everybody, that's it. Uh, again, we are not car experts. If you guys have some insight, please let us know in the comments down below. Hopefully you like this video. Uh, let us know if you really think these car brands can compete with Tesla, Tesla being the big dog, having the coolest branding, uh, leading the way right now. But uh, yeah, let us know in the comments down below. We're the Hot Pop Boys. We're talking about everything from Asian food to Asian cars. Let's get it. Until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.